Well, it's interesting. There's actually a history to that. Uh, Jan van den Acker from the University of Twente and uh, the uh, Dutch Curriculum uh, Organization, he wrote an article back in 1999 actually talking about the proliferation of names for this thing that at that time they were calling uh, design and development research in the Netherlands, and now they've, the more popular term there is educational design research. So this problem with names has been around for a while. Um, frankly, for me, it doesn't really matter. As long as people are focusing their research on important problems and that they're then using a systematic process of analysis and design and formative evaluation to move, uh, to solve that problem, address that problem. I don't care what you call it. Uh, formative experiments, design-based research. My term that I prefer is educational design research, which I could go into, but I, I won't here. But, uh, you know, I just want to get the word out that this is an important approach to inquiry. In the last 12 months, I've done either workshops or talks on educational design research in Singapore, India, Israel, South Africa, Turkey, and Korea, and also the U.S. Next week, I'm going to the University of Texas at Arlington, where George Siemens is, and I'm going to do a workshop for his uh, lab there on uh, educational design research. So I don't, the name thing doesn't bother me. Let a flower, thousand flowers bloom. Uh, you know, let's just get involved in this. Well, I think uh, in the book that Susan McKinney and I did, uh, you know, we do have a model, and our model emphasizes the focus on the problem and the close collaboration with practitioners and then the two major outcomes being a mature intervention and new knowledge in the form of most likely reusable design principles. But the way that you get between that initial analysis of the problem working with practitioners and you get to those outcomes, there's lots of different paths in there. So um, I I think as long as you're keeping in mind that you're grounded in the real world problem and you're grounded in working with practitioners and you're also using the best possible theory and you're open to multiple methods uh, and particularly with a formative stance on data collection that you're looking for information that you can use to improve that intervention and actually tease out new knowledge uh, then uh, you know, some of the uh, models might be more appropriate for professional development. Uh, some might be more appropriate for uh, really high-tech, uh, you know, multi-user virtual environments. I, I can't say for sure, but maybe there are advantages of having these different approaches because maybe they enable you to uh, either work uh, with a different group of people or a different type of problem or craft a different type of solution. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime.